Hey guys, welcome to my live stream. My name is Hannah from Reality Awareness. Please let me know if this is your first time to my live stream. Please comment below and say hi. Let me know where you're from. And I'm really excited because we're in August and that means that for three years I have been bringing you Tuesday Tarot and I'm so excited about that. That's three years never missing a Tuesday. Like how many Tuesdays are there in three years? And it's so exciting about that. So as to celebrate, I am releasing my Goal Reacher program. That is my three month program. There's three distance healings. You get unlimited access to me. You get um, phone calls as well to really reach your goals. And I'm releasing that for a celebratory price um, an investment to work with me deeply for that amount of time. So if you want to have a look at that, let me put the link in the comments. And I just felt really excited to share that because I'm like, it's August. Three years is a really long time, right? So being dedicating and turning up and bringing that to you. Mimi's. Mimi's. What's wrong? What are you doing? What's going on? Okay. Yeah, I'm just... I'm just gonna leave you guys because my cat was calling you, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so three years is a really long time and I feel really cool to share with you, um, like with the, um, with Tuesday Tarot is that when I, when I first began that, right? And what's really important is the dedication and turning up and turning up and turning up and turning up, right? Because if you are trying to build anything, you do something once, uh, yeah, people are gonna like, yeah, right? It's like, oh yeah, but you keep turning up. Like, I just wanna point out, she's a terror. I was sharing this with a client the other day and she's just starting and she's like, I only got like a couple of, like only one comment and you know, and I was just like, and then like I said to her, I said, you need to come, <laughs> yeah, she wants to come on live. <laughs> um, and what I said like to her, is like you need to keep turning up. Like in the start, I didn't have that many either, right? Now, all of you guys, give me some love hearts. If you love Tuesday Tarot, if you read Tuesday Tarot, if you have seen Tuesday Tarot, right? You will see how like there is over 500 people who comment and email me in all my different groups and emails and every single week, right? Now, that didn't happen by me just doing it once. And it was interesting because a couple of days later, I had to, um, like, I don't know, I looked for something and I was like, where is that? And I'm like, the only place that would be would be on Facebook. Like, I obviously deleted a file and I was like, oh my God, what did you do that for? <laughs> so anyway, I went back scrolling through. I was like, maybe it's on Facebook, like back in 2016. And I'm like scrolling back and I'm like, it was. And you know what? I was just like, I found like I saw a Tuesday Tarot post and there was like five comments and like a couple of likes. And I'm like, wow. It's like, wow, what? <laughs> like these days it's really big, right? So if you want to create anything, keep turning up, keep turning up, keep turning up. Um, dedication, commitment, service. That is what I have brought to you for three years. And I'm just so excited that I'm celebrating this in August with you. And I'm going to share the link in the comments. I'm also going to, um, oh, let me put this in there now. Can I share it in there? Yes, I can going to share this live stream and then I'm going to talk about this really important topic. Yeah, someone actually asked me to talk about this and I was like, yeah, she's like, do you have a blog on this or something? And I'm like, I need to talk about this because it's a really big wake up call, right? When the moment you realize your intimate partner is a direct reflection of one of your parents. Yeah, and you just, <laughs> that's not a nice wake up to reality. Yeah, it could be like, um, because of the alcoholism or it could be because of um, something else like abuse or something that's like man this is like what I grew up in right and it's interesting when we have these realizations yeah so let me just share this and I shall talk about this who has in I don't know if you want to comment or not on this but who has had one of these wake-up calls in the past before where you've realized that one of your parents, one of your parents is being reflected through your partner's behaviors, traits, things that you're just like, oh my God, right? And sometimes it can be really confronting and it's also what the hell do we do with that, okay? All right, so let me, 
Why is it letting me share? That was so weird. It wasn't letting me share that the other day either. Here it is. Okay. So it's really important to have that understanding of like, well, why, why does that happen? Yeah. And we're going to dive a little bit deep here. We're going to understand where that comes from. And then what do we actually do about that? Because like I said, it can be really confronting. Yeah. Yep. You. Yep. <laughs> okay. There is people who have had that before. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Why isn't it letting me share? I'll just try and do it from my phone. Okay. So who has experienced that before? Is there anyone else? Even if you're watching the replay, you can let me know. There we go. Yay. I don't know why I couldn't share that from my, um, from my computer. <laughs> like a gummy phone. Hey, Jeanette. Hey, Danny. Hey, everybody. Okay. I've just come out of a trust intuition live stream support call and I've got a little bit of time before I go for my float this morning. So I thought I'd just jump on and talk about this really important topic. Okay. Now, when we grow up, yeah, when we are born, when we've obviously got parents, you know, like the main thing, yeah, the main thing, the two main direct reflections of a masculine, of a feminine, of a intimate partnership, of creation, yeah, the main desire and purpose for life is creation. Whether that's creating a project or creating a baby, that desire is what gives life. Yeah. Now, as a as a child growing up, that intimate partnership is what we experience and only know life to be like, you know, and we have a love for our dad and we have a love for our mother. Now, when we grow up and we start to separate. Yeah. So on the timeline scale from zero to seven and seven to 14, those seven year periods are two crucial elements to creating our beliefs around the world, um, you know, of the world. And then obviously what we create our reality for. Yeah. Hey, Josephine. So from zero to seven, it's usually all about the mother from seven to 14. It's usually all about the father. And at 14, we don't want to know any of them. Right. And you can, you know that, right. And this is, you see it kind of with like young children you might've experienced with yourself, like seven, zero to seven, not, not always like there's different age gaps in those years as well, but they're really crucial developmental age points. So zero to seven, it's all about the mum. seven to 14, all about the dad. And then at 14, we know both. So it's like teenagers rebel and like all this sort of stuff. Well, there's more reasons to that actually, but you know, like we're, and what, what's actually happening, right? And you could see it's like zero to seven is all the feminine understanding. Seven to 14 is all the masculine understanding. And then at 14, even with the digits of the numerology of numbers, it's all single digits. We're in the feminine, we're in the masculine. And then at 14, it's like, you know, we come into this. It's like, that's where we come into ourselves. We come into knowing who we are. We come into like being who we are. And this is why when we, you know, teenagers rebel because they're not allowed to explore the world or they're strict under rules and, you know, all this sort of stuff. And of course there's rules and boundaries, please don't get me wrong, but there's this need to explore and find who I am. Like that's what we're doing at, you know, that 13, like hitting puberty, puberty right? Coming into that. Now, the other really important thing to remember in that space is that when you look back to that timeline on your own, you know, journey into becoming, you know, like reaching maturity at, you know, 12, 13, 14, that crucial period of time and how we were treated impacts us like no tomorrow. Of course, everything impacts us, right? But that's a really crucial time because that's who we are coming into the world. Now, um, you know, if there was, you know, abuse or anything that was going on, like those things are imprinted into your soul, into your system, you know, and when we come through learning from zero to seven, what the mother is like, what the feminine is like, and then what the masculine is like, this is what 
we are like this is like what we're looking for in our world it's like a um what's the thing it's like a i don't know what the word is it's imprinted like that's an imprint on our system when we've come in and we've got these parents and that imprints on our system as as what the world is about yeah and if we haven't done work to reframe re and change that that's what we will attract in our life yeah if you look at your partnerships from that age yeah or whenever you started dating who did they represent yeah was it you know and when that wake up in that moment of coming into like oh my god this partner I'm with is like my dad like or my thing like I've been with partners and they've been alcoholics before and I'm like oh this is like my dad right it's like okay and like because for me that's that was a normal part of my reality growing up like drinking pubs like that was that was lifestyle and then I was with a partner for five years who that was his lifestyle and that's fine people could have that lifestyle but then when I started waking up to the reality I was just like I don't it's not true to who I am it's not true to what lifestyle I is yes the familiar yeah and that's why for some people doing deep internal work i.e consistent inner child work can be really confronting but it's also where we take our power back it is where we take our fucking power back yeah so in my trust intuition course i go deep into inner child work shadow work the whole thing right because it's so powerful in taking our power back and in also trusting ourselves. Because as that little child growing up, we have these views of the world, we have these parents that we, you know, they're our world. Like, of course we can absorb everything because they're, they're our survival. That's like, we love them. Like, no matter what, we fucking love them, right? We learn unconditional love and then we start to like hit 40 and we're like, why can't you give me some space here? You know, try to find myself in the world and then we're still like kind of restricted in a way. So... Another little factor on that, for some reason I keep getting tap on the shoulder to say this bit, is that, you know, back in eons gone past is, you know, like in tribal cultures and, you know, it's still happening in the world in tribal cultures today, is that by maturity, like as soon as um, a girl turns into a woman and has her first menstrual bleed, that's a sign of her being an adult, right? That's a sign of her being um, ready to breed, yeah? Our main purpose for being on this earth is creation. I'm getting covered in goosebumps, right? To continue to reproduce, yeah? Like the earth has incredible um, systems in place to keep life happening, yeah? It's like the seeds that the birds swallow have a protective casing on them so that when they go into the system, they are they can survive and then they're pooped out of the bird system in another place on the planet. So then as soon as the rains come, it washes away the coating and it can sprout. Like, Earth is designed to continue to reproduce. So our, like, hey, Dorothea, our main, like, systems are designed to reproduce, yeah? So we kind of, like, got these ultimate, like, you know, like, pictures in our head or imprints on our system about what we're looking for and what feels familiar so we're comfortable to reproduce. Now, the thing about, you know, the, um, what is that? The, the moment you realize your intimate partner is a direct reflection of one of your parents doesn't mean that you have to leave them and it's a bad thing you know it's just like the realization of what you're attracted to now the thing with doing inner work and clearing out and healing childhood wounds and trauma and abuse and all of that is that sometimes we wake up to the reality that actually this is not what I'm attracted to because actually it's been an imprint on my system of what was in my environment when I grew up and when we do inner work to clear out our traumas and heal our wounds and clear energetic work and re like revisit past lives that we clear out all that like repeating patterns and stuff what actually happens is in all of a sudden instead of all this imprinting on our field and our system and what we've come into this lifetime with and through the birth canal and the whole thing right when we clear all that out all of a sudden we're left with like a clean slate and we're like oh well what, what is this now? Like, okay, so, well, and that's why when we grow and evolve and we wake up spiritually and we do this work, it's like the things that once we were attracted to, the things that brought us joy and happiness and fulfilled us, all of a sudden don't anymore. And that's when people feel lost and they're like confused and they're like, what the hell's going on? And so when they have that wake up in your relationship, it's kind of like, oh, what do I do now, right? Can be very confronting. 
the first thing is to do is to get support, of course. You know, you like you knew I was going to say that, right? It's like you need support to go through this. If you're going through any sort of awakening and you don't have support in being able to guide you through and what to do, you know, like of course the tools and like my course is there. It's a self-like paced course that you can go through and like support yourself with it. That's designed like that, right? And I've just come out of the trust intuition support call and, you know, you've got that support in there. But anybody, you know, like just having that regular support to be able to get you through these things. Because when you have the realization that the partner you're with is a reflection, a direct reflection of one of your parents, sometimes that can be confronting and we go through this change. We're like, oh, well, I don't. It's like you, you, you might kind of think that it's a bad thing. But remember our mindset and what we're working to, you know, create in our world is that anything we think of as bad is going to be bad. Now, if we continue to do the inner work, so, you know, when you have that realization, it's kind of like, okay, well, why did I bring this into my life? Like, is this a little girl inside of me that's like just craving her daddy's love? Is this a little boy inside of me that's just wanting the love and nurturing from my mother that I never got? Like, you know, and it could be either of those and they can flip around and be verse roles and all of that. Okay. So it's like looking at this and when we hit this level of realization and wake up to this level of what we're talking about on this live stream this is like you know when we have a spiritual awakening and we're like oh it's amazing and we connect to angels and spirit guides and then it's all of a sudden like you know how i always say we have an awakening and then it's like the reality turns to shit and we're like oh my god what's going on what is happening is you're waking up to the truth of your reality now sometimes that can seem like a bad thing but it's just all this unfelt hurt in your heart Funnily enough, we're like on the truth, on the throat chakra and speaking and like living the truth. And then like all the hurt that's buried in the heart, yeah, is is given a chance to come out because all those buried hurts are carrying a certain vibration and your soul, your beautiful, bright spark of a soul, your 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 soul is not the vibration of all the human pain and suffering. Right, but we live in a duality reality that is both. We're the beautiful, light, bright soul, and we are the human as well. It's not that this is bad, right? It's that this, this is a thing, and as our soul grows and and we go along in life and we have a wake up call and like, uh, right? What's happening is that this vibration is getting so dense and heavy that all of a sudden we have to shift this bigger part because our soul, our soul is continually growing and evolving. Just like the earth is like, you know, the seed story that I spoke about, like that continual evolution and desire for creation it is a real thing, right? Hey, Sarah. And so with this thing, releasing buried hurts today, yes, so important, right? Because as we keep growing and our vibration rises and the, the natural evolution of life, right, this gets heavy and we're kind of like stretched like this. And this is where wake up calls happen because it's like we continue, our soul is like continually evolving. Like it's never going to stop whether we're doing the work or not. Just, we just keep growing, right? And so this stuff becomes very dense. And so as we continue to raise our vibration, especially if you're doing work and you're connecting and you're meditating and you're doing yoga or whatever it is, like that that naturally happens. This is forced <laughs> to come out of your field, right? I always talk about this. And so waking up to the realization that your intimate partner is a direct reflection of one of your parents is a sign that you have just kind of like, shift. I don't like using levels, but you've shifted to the next level of consciousness. You've come into a deeper understanding of your reality. You're awakening a deeper part of your consciousness that your soul is guiding. Yeah. So all that means is by clearing out the hurts and the pains, because if you look at it, and this is the epitome of shadow work, right? <laughs> We're on throat chakra. This is the epitome of shadow work, yeah? Because if you look at those traits that your partner has that is reflecting one of your parents, right? You'll be like, oh, that's just like dad, or that's just like mum, or oh my God, you're just like, you're just like my mum that I grew up in, like, you know, that sort of thing. That is a sign that your inner child is carrying so much hurt that is being reflected out into the world that you've drawn into the exact thing that's going to wake you up to heal the hurts that you've been carrying. Now, 
you can stay with that partner if you still love them and you know it's obviously safe and it's not a volatile relationship of course like you know do what feels right for you i'm not saying you have to leave them i'm saying that it's bringing up the hurt and the pain that is being reflected from your childhood back then you've just reached a different level of consciousness when you come to the realization that your intimate partner is a direct reflection of one of your parents so you can celebrate your growth, but it's not always easy and it's kind of painful at times, right? And that's why I'm like, get support. <laughs> get support and join a group for someone who knows what's going on, right? And can guide you through the process. Now, the thing is when you do the work and you heal the hurts of your childhood and if it drops into past lives or whatever that is and you heal these you know, things that happen, yeah? What you will find is, this is the epitome of shadow work, is that when you work on the stuff that you're carrying that's being reflected in your reality and you instead of making them the problem and making that the problem and well it's you and it's your behavior and you need to change and you need to do that if you leave this relationship now right if you leave this what happens is that you will just go and attract another one because you haven't fixed this fixed this right you haven't dealt with this and so that's still being projected out in the world so you're going to keep attracting people just like that okay that's why relationship we were same 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 yeah so it's what i always say to people yeah like when they do i stay do i go and i'm like well let's just leave that for a moment and let's do this and i say you know like 21 days 30 days three months like do a big chunk of time on it consistent turning up time right because then, then, right, we do all this inner work and then we can come back and reassess this. Now, some people have done this work with me and they have gone, oh my God, I'm so glad I did this because I actually love this person to bits. And they stay together. And what has happened is that all the things that were triggering them about that person have now shifted and they don't feel the same deep triggers and it doesn't worry them. It doesn't, it's just like, it's not there anymore right because they've done the work and all of a sudden in between this person and this person is not all the shit stopping them and the shit fired and blah 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 right now when two people do that work poof, sky high one person doing the work it's if it, this person might still be in the same place and that's okay because when we shift this we come to that acceptance of being able to love them where they're at yeah now both people do the work that's when things skyrocket and it doesn't mean things don't skyrocket without that but what happens is because all this has shifted all of a sudden there's like there's no gap in between you guys anymore do you know what i mean like you've shifted all the blocks that you've been putting up in your wall and all of a sudden it's like too it's too much you know like the, the stretch is too much right like i said and that's the wake up call and that's the like fuck right and it's like you've just hit another layer of consciousness yeah and that's all that's going on here and it's actually a deep celebration of the work you've done to date in a way right so that's really important. And then the other thing I was just about to say to that is, um, yeah, so the epitome of shadow work is that all of a sudden, yeah, we've cleared this out, yeah, and all of a sudden that gap's gotten smaller and the connection's stronger again, yeah? You, you feel the love, whatever. It'll either be, I'm so glad I did the work because, um, yeah, I, I, I love this person a bit, right? The other thing that can happen, of course, it'll go one or two ways, right? The other thing that can happen is like you'll feel that connection, you'll see it all, and you'll be like, oh, I love this person, but I just can't be with them. It doesn't align with my values, right? And it'll be one of those two things. And that's that's one thing, but all you will or you won't resonate anymore, yes, right? Because the other thing that happens is that we can come into deep acceptance so we can be with them and you know and that's where our heart is calling us to be or we can be like actually this really doesn't align with me anymore and then we need to take steps work but if you decide to walk away you've done the work so it's kind of like if you if you walk away and you're like oh fuck, i don't know if i should have done that or maybe i should have done that inner work first like do you know what i mean so if you do all this in a way just kind of leave that side do all the inner work 30 days three months however long right and you come back and you're like actually still no that's it's right for me to leave when you can leave with no regrets in a way right and of course there's you know doing things together as well if that person's open to it like of course there's all that that factors into it 
But if you walk away when you've done the work, you leave with no regrets going, I have done everything I could have done. I did the inner work and I still came to that conclusion. Because the worst thing you can do, unless you're in a violent situation and you need to get safe, the worst thing you can do is leave and go, fuck, I wish I'd done that inner work. Like, you know, because you'll do the inner work over here and you'll be like, oh, but what if I just did that first? Or what if I did this? Whereas if you do it whilst you're still in that, making that decision, then you'll be clear of like, okay, cool. Yeah, actually, I still need to leave. Okay. Now, the miracle that happens. Okay, the miracle that happens when we commit and do this work, okay, and we change our reality, this person's got a reality and this person's got a reality. And for some reason, those realities were melding. Okay, and then all of a sudden we're changing our reality. Now, what happens when we change our reality? Everything around us changes. So the miracles that can happen by doing inner work, whether it's inner child shadow work, whatever the deep healing work is, consistent, not just a once-off healing session, no. Deep, consistent inner work. Like, how old are you, right? I'm 34. It's like there's 34 years of re un unwriting, re rewiring everything that I've been through in my life to, you know, it's like a couple of days is not going to re rewire my entire childhood. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, this is consistent inner work, guys. This is continually turning up. It, your soul is continually evolving and growing. Like, you don't just do the work and I'm done now. Like, it doesn't matter. That's not how it works. It just gets easier once we get through the hardest chunk, right? Does it? <laughs> In a way. Um, so the miracle that happens is that everything changes around us in our reality. That means that traits we thought we hated in that partner and we do the work and we're like, oh, we cleared that out. All of a sudden, this person will do two things. They'll stop doing that trait or we won't be, we won't have the same reaction to it. We won't, it won't bother us anymore. And that's where we come into that acceptance because we're like, oh, because it was actually us and our reaction and our trigger and our hurt from goodness knows when, right? So that moment you realize your intimate partner is a direct reflection of one of your parents is a real deep celebration that your level of consciousness has shifted. It has shifted to an amazing new space and depth of your reality where you're coming into really owning your stuff, where you're coming into really owning your power, where you're coming into a really understanding a deeper level of yourself and what reality is actually created from. You're shifting into a more powerful place of manifestation. You're shifting out the blocks that are stopping the manifestation of you getting to where you're wanting to go, right? And you're changing your entire reality from the inside out, which is where we create our reality from, yeah? all the way back from when we were born, right? Instead of everything imprinting on us, we're clearing all that out so we can create what we really want, yeah? Oh, does anyone have any questions about that? Um, just gonna see, I know there was some comments coming in. Oh yes, so let's see. You can work through it together, yes, Michelle. Yes, if two willing people, like if both people did the work, that's what I mean, fly high. That's, that's facing your shadows real time together. Yeah. Okay. Josephine says, yes, me and, me and husband, but still working on it. Being hard, but getting there. Yes. Getting better. Exactly. Together, together. Or you won't resonate anymore. Yes. Michelle says, yes, I recognize when I'm like my husband's mother. Yes. Cleaning the house and feeding him. Yes. Isn't it interesting, right? Because both people have attracted both because of that resonance of both parents. Like that's, you know, that's kind of like the reality created to, for whatever, right? So when we can recognize that, we can step back and actually go, oh, what are you needing? What are you needing? Oh, actually, you know, and if we've got that level of communication depth, that's when the rea relationship and reality shifts for both of you. You both clear out blocks to manifesting. Like, it's huge, right? Yes, yes, exactly. I've known for years that my ex was a mirror of my, other, of my mother. Yes, exactly, right? Especially before awakening when I got married and started becoming how I remembered my mother. Yes, yes, exactly right. We all have that. We all have it. And that's why working with healing the masculine, healing the feminine, healing the divine within us, right? And balancing that. And that's why inner child work and inner family work really shifts that internal structure to change. And then we can breathe life into what we really want, right? So 
So it's so, so awesome to have that realization. Like I said, it's not a bad thing. It's like a next level of consciousness that you've dropped into that happens when we spiritually awaken. Yeah, we all talk about the chakras. We spiritually awaken, we open to spirit, all the information and light comes in. Then we drop down into the third eye. What is this one? Seeing the truth in relationships. Ding, remember? Family dynamics, dynamics in relationship, childhood, past life, future life, all lives, like relationship to this person, relationship to my phone, relationship, remember, right? We open, we have this awakening, and then all of a sudden, fuck, seeing the truth of the reality. Oh my God, my partner reminds me of, right? We're listening here. We're stepping into taking action on it. What do I need to do? Integrating the shadows, integrating the shadows real time, doing the inner work, dropping down to heal the hurts in the heart, taking back your power, solar plexus, yeah? Sacral chakra, nourishing what actually feels right, clearing out manifestation and birthing a new reality from coming down of that level of awareness to opening, hitting reality, oh my God, and then coming down, birthing a new reality from that level of consciousness. And that's why I say to you guys, every time you go through the chakra journey, it's gonna be another layer. It's gonna be another layer, right? It's powerful, it's powerful. Would you recommend taking it to the, talking to the family member or working through it alone? Yeah, um, you need to tune into what's right for you. Sometimes talking to the family member, sometimes just doing the inner work. Usually it's the same thing as like the, the partner, like experience, um, example and experience I gave you there. Um, with that ex example, it's like looking at, um, you know, like doing the inner work first. So it was like doing all the inner work. So inner child, inner family, you know, inner relative, like the whole thing dropping into past life, like doing the full clearing thing. In Rapid Ascension Awakening, like in the third eye chakra actual course, there's actually a healing protocol, like literally like it's a flow chart of like, if this happens, try this, do this one, this one, okay, this one, like it's like a step by step, like into the depths of subconscious of what to clear and then coming back up to the relationship about what actually, you know, then the next step in the physical reality, like reassess. So once you've done all that clearing, it's like, um, you know, as I said, sometimes you don't even need to speak to that person because those traits don't bother you anymore or those traits are just not even an awareness in your reality because you've integrated them because it was actually your trigger about something else and now you clear that. It's like you don't even, like, oh, you might see it and you just don't have the same energetic reaction to it, right? After you've done all that inner work, you might still feel like I do need to have a conversation with that person, but it won't carry so much charge because you've cleared all that. Okay, and so always remember that the energy you bring to the table is what you're going to get mapped back. And when you can bring a clearer space to the table, it's going to be met with a, a more opening space. It doesn't mean that they won't react in a way. Um, depends on the person and the situation, of course. Um, but yeah, that can that will be needing to be a choice. But I would say like do the inner work first for sure. Um, so Kelly says, if you've done the work and understand the dynamics and coming into the balance, what is the next step for me? Yeah, so that would be obviously listening to intuition and trusting that. And usually once we've done a big chunk of work, right? And this is where I always say it comes in waves. Yeah, it comes in cycles and it comes in waves. The grief comes in waves, everything comes in waves. So, um, so it's like we can do a big clearing and be like, oh, and that's when we can get on with our purpose work. We can get on what we're called to do. We can actually just enjoy being for a moment. We always talk about clearing out and then enjoying the space, right? When we start moving in a direction of our life purpose or something we're being called to do, we'll move along and be like, okay, cool. What will happen is it will reach a certain point and then another like block or level or layer will come up. And this is what I always say, we're constantly evolving. There's, you know, there's always going to be stuff at whatever level. Yeah. It's just that, like I said, when we first start dealing with this, we're learning something new. We're clearing out a big chunk. It's, it's overwhelming because it's all new. But when we keep going and evolving and continuing our evolution work, it gets easier because we're like, oh, this is what's happening. Right. When we continue, especially when we're working on goals and dreams and moving forward in our life, things will always come up. But when we see them as just another layer or to clear out another process to go through to shift that layer out, then we can keep going forward. And it doesn't seem as bad because we're starting to understand the cycles of healing and understand the process, understanding how to support ourselves in those processes. So it's important that if we've done all the work 
enjoy the space because you will be guided and something else will come up that your heart is calling you to do and then we can start to train ourselves to heal through joy yeah instead of pain yeah that takes time and practice doesn't mean we don't ever get upset and it means we know how to support ourselves and work through things faster just because we understand it more. A bit like driving a car, it took up so much time when we we're first learning about it. Now we don't ever think about it. It doesn't take up much time to drive our car. Um, inner work can shift so much. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Emma says, I've shifted. I have a deeper understanding of myself just because my family have lost the plot. <laughs> yep. Um, not sure what else he said. That was it. Jumping off. Oh, yeah. Um, I feel like I've never been more in control. When I was down, they were like, well, it's Emma now, I feel more in control, it's causing drama. <laughs> yeah. Um, then I get blamed for always causing the family drama, I cannot win, so now don't try it. Yeah, I know, it's always a drama when we're just speaking our truth and we're actually speaking the truth, right? I get it, <laughs> been there, done that, we're just taking our power back and that's why it's important to align with people who are okay with being empowered. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to think he has to change, but soon realized he's showing me what I need to work on. Yes, okay. If you're watching this live stream and you haven't seen my live stream I did towards the end of last year, it's called I Thought That I Wanted a Conscious Man. Please send me a message and I will get you the direct link for that one. If that calls to you, whether you're male or female, that was really empowering as well. Um, soon I will release my relationship page and all this stuff will be on there as well for you. So... Yeah, it's really powerful. It's always about us. I have a huge level of peace. Yes, awesome. Enjoy it. Anchor that baby in. <laughs> Anchor it in. Yeah, resonates so much with it, for sure. All right, guys, so I'm going to jump off this live stream. And remember, it is August, so we're celebrating three months of Tuesday, or three years of Tuesday Tarot with my three-month Goal Reacher program. It is usually three and almost three and a half thousand, and I'm releasing it for $12.97. So you can work with me for three months deep diving. There's three distance healings. You get phone calls with me. There's unlimited WhatsApp access, support, and psychic readings, and everything that comes along with that. So the link is in the comments and at the top of this live stream or you'll see it posted on my page or send me a message for any questions about it. If you think that this live stream can help somebody, please share it with them in the, in the, on like in a private message, tag their name in the comments, share it on your page, get the word out there that it is not a bad thing when you realize that your partner is reflecting one of your parents. It is actually that you have shifted into a deeper level of com. Um, consciousness and moving into a deeper, greater level of empowerment and being able to manifest what you want in your reality instead of all the imprints on your system actually manifesting from an unconscious place. You're coming into more conscious awareness and empowerment. That is all. It is a good thing, but you may need support to help get through the hardest part. And that's what I'm here for. That's what other people are support people for. So please reach out and remember, you can do everything you want by clearing out everything that comes along because moving forward, when you move forward into alignment with your life purpose, everything that you want comes into that. But the things that are like, oh my God, what's going on here? It is just something to clear out, to move forward into the direction your heart is calling you to go, right? Yes, it sounds great. Yes, awesome to have you live, guys. Lots of love. <laughs>